going. I think uh, people will join as we uh, as we get going, um, and they're they're uh, joining in now. Um, so basically, uh, thank you for for joining us this morning. Um, we um, we're we're taking this um, uh, this uh, round slot in December uh, every year to take a look back at uh, at the previous year and maybe reflect a little bit and, and, and maybe celebrate a little bit of some of the accomplishments of, of us as a department, as a group, a, a, as, a, as a group, uh, as a whole. Uh, I think when um, uh, there's, there's obviously a huge amount of work and effort, and uh, I, I think it's, it's a great opportunity at the end of the year and uh, to, to take a look back at 2021 and, and, um, and look forward to, to, 20, to 2022. Um, it's been a while, uh, actually, and may, I'm sure that's a very good thing that we've had. Uh, you know, there was a time not that long ago that we were ha having literally, you know, weekly town halls, and uh, I think that's a good thing as we as we adapt to the situation and continue to adapt. But uh, as as you'll see, uh, I think there's a lot to celebrate in the department and a lot of uh, great work that uh, that's going on and 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 important uh, transitions that I think are also really important to recognize. So I'm gonna run the slide deck and we have a, a, a nice uh, list of, of, uh, of, of uh, parts of this presentation, uh, beginning with our uh, hospital reports from uh, you know, Dr. Tanzer, uh, uh, the um, uh, Associate uh, Surgeon in Chief at the MUHC and our Surgeon in Chief at the JGH in St. Mary's. We're going to hear from Dr. Kasouf, uh, who's our uh, Associate Chair for Academic Affairs, and Dr. LaChapelle for Education, and Dr. Barrelet for Research, and then I'll uh, wrap things up with a couple of uh, with a couple of announcements at the end. Uh, so I think, uh, yep, Michael's going to start. I'm going to run the slides for him. Great. Thanks, Leanne. So we've had uh, one new recruitment. We'd like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Rafael sanchez Celez from the uh, Department of Urology, who comes as a surgeon scientist, who is particularly interested in minimally invasive um, treatments for uh, oncology and prostate cancer. And we welcome him to the MUHC. He's already started and uh, well on his way. Next slide. We've had one retirement uh, for all all of us remember Mark Corvo, who's been a member of our department for many, many years, and we wish uh, Mark uh, good luck moving forward. If, if we look at uh, where we've come from, as Leanne mentioned, we've been having uh, multiple meetings previously because of COVID. Uh, finally, we got uh, back on track a little bit. In February, the end of February, we changed the uh, OR schedule to finally uh, start a block OR distribution again. However, we've continued with the OR prioritization committee to continue to distribute the flex time based on the, uh, the wait lists and the needs. We have made a substantial improvement in our OR activities. Uh, this is the uh, stats from the MGH for period one to eight. You can see that the number of cases in increased by over 500 cases, but about 300 from the scheduled surgeries. And of course, trauma picked up once patients started coming back to the hospital. So overall, there was a gain of over 500 cases. Next, if we look at the VIC, <clears throat> we can see that although the number of emergency cases has uh, stayed stable from 2020 to 2021, there's an increase of over just over 400 cases in scheduled surgeries. And as you know, we started using Rockland as part of the uh, ministry directive uh, to try to offload some of our day surgery cases. And so we did an extra 200 cases uh, up to period seven. And finally at Lachine, it's hard to run the deck, eh, Elliot? Uh, and at Lachine, Lachine's been uh, very active, actually. A lot of bariatric surgery, uh, they're gonna surpass their previous uh, values even of 2019. So they're already up almost uh, 400 cases. And to date, so we've uh, improved uh, about 1,500 to 1,600 cases since uh, prior to COVID. So you may think that's not a lot because we didn't do very much during COVID, but it was a significant amount of work from the perioperative staff, the nurses, the anesthetists, the RTs, the PABs, you really have to congratulate everybody for ramping up as, as best we can under these conditions. Next slide. So you can see that we continue to have challenges. I'm not sure these challenges are a lot different than we had before COVID. So these are the data from 2019 and 2021. If we look at our oncology wait list, 
certainly there's more oncology patients coming back to the institution now, but you can see that our 28 and 56 day delays are really no different than they were prior to 2019. They improved during COVID because we used the flex time for all the oncology patients and there were less patients. But as we get back to our normal uh, uh, population of patients, you can see we're back to where we were prior to COVID. However, the non-cancer uh, waitlist continues to mushroom and it's actually at about 5,500 patients uh, this month. Next slide. But there are some good things coming out of all of this. Uh, one of them is the MGH OR renovation. And so you can see in the central portion that's blue, that's gonna be the new central core of the operating room, which will relieve theaters two, five, and six as storage areas. Next slide. And that's already started. And we're also going to have a new lounge. So the, there's the nurse's lounge up in the top uh, right-hand corner and the surgeon's lounge adjacent to it. So we'll have some new renovated spaces coming up next. I think most importantly, we'll have new theaters. So theater one and two, which are two very small theaters will be combined as well theaters five and six to have these type of, this is the uh, planned theater that's going to be in one and two and five and six. And I think this will be a beautiful addition to the MGH after uh, a lot of struggling during COVID. Next slide. And so we've come a long way, but we still have challenges. <clears throat> like, uh, like the non-hospital world, we do have manpower issues that have uh, limited our ability to expand. We had planned to go <clears throat> to, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 rooms at the General and 11 at the Vic, but uh, due to manpower issues that are actually not just at the MUHC, but throughout the province, we've uh, only managed at the MGH to go back to the pre-COVID OR distribution come the uh, new year, back to nine rooms. The RVH and Lachine are down uh, one room or two rooms at each site, but we do have new prospects for uh, beds. So we're uh, working on creating an ERAS unit for high efficiency, high turnover patients that are on ERAS protocols or have a short length of stay. And that's gonna open in the beginning of January. And we still have uh, plans to open up intermediate care beds at both the VIC and the general. So we, we look forward to uh, getting back to where we were and getting better, to, better than we were before uh, after we get out of this uh, manpower issue. And so that's where we stand, Leanne. Thank you for the opportunity in presenting all this. And I do want to thank all the perioperative staff. It really has been a challenge to move forward, but I think we've made uh, big strides since uh, January of last year. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we're going to move to uh, Dr. Chater at the, at the JGH. Uh, Leanne, I'm going to have to ask you to uh move my slides forward because I can't share a screen anyway. Absolutely. So uh, in terms of our clinical situation, uh, pre-pandemic, we were running 13 rooms uh, per day. Uh, and uh, on uh, about half of uh, the weeks uh, during the month, so two months, uh, uh, two weeks a month, we were running 14 rooms. In 2021, obviously, we were uh, down a lot. Uh, from January to April, we were only running six to eight rooms because of the third wave. In May to June, we got up to nine rooms. July and August, we were up to 10 rooms. And in September until now, we've been running 11 rooms tentatively. Um, we have a lot of challenges with staffing. We were hoping to get to 12 rooms after Christmas, but uh, it was initially a nursing shortage. We have resolved our nursing shortage. Now we have an RT shortage. Uh, and so it, it looks like we'll only be able to run 11 rooms after uh, Christmas. We do have uh, Rockland and we run seven rooms a week at Rockland. Uh, so uh, technically we're running 12 rooms if, we, if you count Rockland because Rockland was given to us to take away our outpatients. So uh, that has offloaded some of the uh, one day surgery cases that we were doing at uh, uh, the JGH before. So uh, right now we're stable. Uh, the staffing is stable, but we're looking to recruit more RTs. And I think that's a problem across the board for uh, most uh, hospitals. Next. So uh, I was, I kind of took a different path than Michael. I didn't go into uh, so much of the details of what was going on at our hospital. I decided to go by our different uh, divisions. Uh, we have teaching units for all of these divisions at our hospital. Uh, general surgery has three teaching units. Uh, orthopedics has three teaching units. And uh, ORL has two teaching units, one head and neck and one thyroid. Next. In 
In cardiac surgery, uh, we have uh, two uh, university positions. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Moss is the program director for cardiac surgery, and Dr. Yves Langlois is the chair of the cardiac surgery competency committee. Uh, they have uh, seven uh, publications this year uh, in peer review uh, journals. Colorectal surgery, uh, they have two fellows, uh, which are shared fellows with the MUHC. Uh, they've had uh, six publications accepted and 14 published. They have grants totaling 298,000. Uh, and uh, any grants that were over three years, I uh, just divided by three uh, to give how much would be in the last year. Uh, Dr. Mary Lise Boutros uh, was named as the Outstanding Faculty in Excellence in Teaching, and Dr. Uh, Carol Ann Basileski won the uh, Marvin Wexler Faculty of Clinical Excellence Award. Also in colorectal, we, Mary Lise Boutros is Program Director for the Colon and Rectal Surgery Fellowship, and Gabby Gidalescu is the Program Director for the Surgical Foundations. Our new recruit, she's not exactly in 2021, she started late in 2020, uh, is Alison Pang. Uh, she did her general surgery residency at the University of Toronto and then uh, her residency in colorectal surgery at McGill. She has a master of science degree in biochemistry at uh, U of T. Um, and she is an expert in open and minimally invasive surgery. Uh, and she's an excellent teacher and she's a great asset to our program. In general surgery, we have uh, two fellows, one hepatobiliary, one breast. They've had five uh, publications, four book chapters, all by Evan uh, Wong, and they've had grants totaling 15,000. So our university positions, we, uh, Shannon is chair of the Surgical Foundations Competency Committee, plus many roles at the level of the hospital. Uh, Simon Bergman is uh, Assistant Dean for the Undergraduate Medical Education Accreditation. J.S. Pelche is Assistant Program Director for Surgical Foundations, and he was our uh, surgery champion for uh, NISQIP for the last three or four years, uh, and he's just uh, retired from that position. Evan Wong is the Associate, Associate Program Director for Critical Medicine in uh, um, uh, pro the Residency Program. Uh, so that, that's all our university positions for uh, Gen Surge. Our one retirement is Roger Fenster. He uh, stepped down after many years of service at the Jewish General, and we are very thankful for everything that he uh, did for our hospital. In uh, ORL, uh, I think that's a mistake, uh, OTL, uh, I guess. Uh, there's two fellows, one head and neck, one thyroid. Uh, they've had 12 publications and they have grants totaling 196,000. Uh, their awards, Saul Frankel got the Prix uh, uh, Reconnaissance uh, de l'Association ORL du Québec uh, this year. Our new recruit for uh, ORL is Marco uh, Ma Mascarella. Uh, he got his uh, medical degree from uh, McGill and completed his ORL residency at McGill. And he also did a master's in epidemiology during his residency. Uh, he did his fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh in head and neck oncology. And uh, we welcome uh, Marco. He's a great asset to our program. Orthopedics, uh, we have uh, four fellows, three in arthroplasty, one in foot and ankle. There's been eight publications uh, this year. We have grants totaling uh, approximately 400,000 uh, per year. Uh, the university position is mine. I'm, a chair, I'm the chair of the Orthopedic Competency Committee. Plastic surgery, they've had seven publications and we've had, uh, got one new recruit, which is Alex. Alex uh, Vizel Mathieu uh, just started. Uh, I think it's on the next page. Um, Next slide. Yeah, he's uh, completed his uh, med school and uh, residency here at McGill. He completed the surgeon scientist program and got a master's degree uh, focusing on breast surgery and surgical education. And he did an extra year of fellowship training at the U of T focusing on breast reconstruction. And so he's gonna be a great asset considering all of the breast uh, uh, surgery that we do at our institution. 
vascular surgery uh, have one fellow, uh, it's shared also uh, with the MUHC. They have grants totaling 37,000. They've had three publications this year. Uh, the good thing with vascular is we've uh, acquired a high fidelity endovascular simulator. And uh, Dr. Ellie uh, Gershwitz has uh, developed a simulation program uh, for teaching on the, the simulator. So uh, Dr. Danny O'Brien won the Harvey Sigman Undergraduate Teaching Award this year. Uh, university position, Ellie uh, Gershwitz is uh, the McGill Research Advisory Committee Chair and Jason Bain is the Program Director for Vascular Surgery. Urology, uh, they've had 11 publications this year. They have grants totaling 175,000. Uh, and uh, Lisanne Campo has uh, Fond de Recherche uh, Santé Québec. Uh, she's a junior scholar uh, to award, totally 139 or 140,000, say. And uh, that's it for the Jewish. Uh, I wanted to kind of introduce what we were doing and uh, focus more on the academic side of things. I want to wish everybody uh, happy holidays and Let's hope that 2022 is better than 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, and we're going to go, I think, if uh, if Dr. Jataran is here. Donna? Morning. Uh, can you hear me? I believe you do. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so I will simply start by introducing our new recruits for this that we've uh, brought in this year. Uh, Ryan Coughlin joined the Division of Orthopedics. And he does primarily arthroscopic and uh, uh, sports medicine. He has specific interests, as you see, in, in shoulder and joint injuries, and primarily is working uh, as a uh, sports medicine person. Um, he's joined a really strong division of orthopedics, so uh, we welcome him. He's, he's really contributed well to the teaching and to what he's, uh, he's working on. And, and Phil Vertumis, uh, I think probably you're all familiar with Phil. He recently graduated from McGill and then he did a fellowship in minimally invasive and bariatric surgery. And he joined us in September. So he's our, our new kid on the block and uh, he's wonderful to have around. He's now taken over the core teaching uh, and he's, he's a really good asset for us. And then I think our final one, yes, Mohammed al Mahrouz. Mohammed trained here and he has also done extra training in minimally invasive and advanced laparoscopic training. Mohammed uh, worked as a uh, replacement for us for almost a year. And now he's joined our division officially and we're very glad to have him here with us. And finally, I really just ran over um, the amount of, of resident and student teaching that we do at St. Mary's because we're quite proud of it and I think we're happy to have residents and students coming. They're happy to be here with us. Um, general surgery through the rotations of the year, we've had 47 residents, 44 students. Orthopedics is very strong in its teaching and actually is, is really uh, presently our strongest division at St. Mary's Hospital. Plastics, 20 residents, seven students. Urology, likewise, we have a, a number of residents and students coming through. So this is our big contribution, I think, to the teaching. And we see we enjoy it as much as the, the residents and students enjoy being with us. Uh, so as we return to close to normal activities at present, uh, I'd just like to wish everybody a happy end of the year and a better new year. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. We're going to uh, go now to our uh, associate chairs and starting with uh, Dr. Kastouf, Wes. Good morning, everyone. So uh, for 2021, I just want to highlight uh, four things uh, that we worked on. Uh, number one, the onboarding and mentorship program, the promotions webinar, the new faculty development website and the academic tracks in surgery. Next slide. So back, back in uh, the spring, we uh, sent out a survey for all the faculty members who have been recruited for the last 10 years. And we just wanted to gauge what are the unmet needs uh, that, uh, that uh, they've experienced. And uh, one of the things that uh, came uh, quite often is uh, 
some sort of asking for some sort of a formal guidance, particularly uh, in the first few years uh, as faculty. So uh, in the summer, we put together this onboarding and mentorship program for all uh, new recruits. And this, this, this program will be mandatory for everyone who's recruited in 2021 going forward. It's optional and uh, people who were recruited a year or two earlier, if they want that, they can ask, uh, they can email us and we can put that together. It's essentially a committee that meets at least uh, twice a year for the next uh, three to five years upon joining the faculty. The committee uh, composes of the division director and uh, the chair and at least one faculty member within the division and one external member outside the division. And we hope going forward, uh, this kind of facilitates and helps uh, uh, guidance, particularly in the next uh, three or five years as uh, people are on faculty and uh, hopefully kind of optimize their chance of academic success. So for those who were recruited in 2021, if you have not had your first committee meeting, please email either myself or uh, Christina Rainberger and we'll make sure that uh, happens very shortly. Next. The other thing that came out also is, uh, you know, although a lot of it is on the university website, there has been uh, questions about how the promotions work, what's the process, so what's the tips and tricks in terms of optimizing your dossier. So based on that, uh, I've got together with uh, Dr. Leslie Fellows. So Leslie Fellows uh, uh, also happens to chair the, uh, the faculty uh, promotions committee at the university level, faculty medicine as well myself, where I chaired the uh, Departmental of Surgery Promotions Committee. And we put together this webinar to, uh, to give the information, uh, how to optimize your dossier, tips and tricks, that what we're looking for, what's important, what's not important. Everything, again, is uh, housed at the link that you see here, which is part of the Department of Surgery website, including the uh, recorded uh, video of that uh, webinar. And I think this kind of thing is helpful, not just when you're applying for promotion, even when you're starting as faculty, it, it kind of helps frame and define how you wanna move your career forward. So I would encourage you to, to see that uh, regardless of what stage you are. Next slide. The third thing is the, uh, the new faculty development website. So we've uh, created this uh, and it's housed again in the Department of Surgery website. This is the link that you see. If you go to the next slide, when you click on the faculty development, you see this uh, web page. And uh, essentially, we, we try to do to have this as a kind of a one stop shop for everything related to academics. So you have info about the onboarding and mentorship program. You have info about if you're interested in taking leadership uh, workshops, all the different faculty workshops that are out there within the onboarding, onboarding and mentorship uh, section you have access to that if you want to register or whatever is housed uh, historically. Physician wellness, uh, resources and links, uh, promotions and performance evaluations, which I will talk in the next uh, slide or two as well. Next. So within that uh, section of onboarding mentorship, there's also for those who are not aware, any new recruit can have access and apply for the Tomlinson uh, Award. This is basically a match of funding to help with regards to salary support or operating funds. Uh, and there's information about that. Uh, if you go through that website, you can uh, read through it. Next. So performance evaluation, as you see, you, you know, every year you get a, a message from uh, Dr. Leanne Feldman to fill out this uh, self evaluation forms. We've also added uh, right now what, what we call the surgery performance metrics with. Uh, little things that we, you know, that, that we look out for in terms of evaluating overall performance. This is, again, it's, it's dynamic. It's, it's, uh, it can change on, you know, every few years basis, but this is for you to, to tap into and uh, look over at your own time. Next. And lastly, the academic uh, tracks and surgery. Uh, so basically now it's official and approved. And what we try to do uh, next is to, um, formulate uh, different tracks uh, within the Department of Surgery, be it a surgeon uh, teacher, surgeon educator, investigator, surgeon scientist, and uh, link that to uh, basically next general descriptions of what that means, uh, time distributions of, uh, of how, uh, what expectations you, you foresee a new recruit uh, uh, utilizing with regards to time commitment to clinics, research, education, so on. 
And I think every, every letter of offer going forward will uh, have uh, an academic track tagged to uh, the candidate which is not fixed in stone. So in a few years, if someone wants to change to a different track, that can happen as well. Uh, next, and uh, next. So this is again, information, one slide backwards, please. Uh, this is information that's housed again on the website. And uh, the only thing that's missing out of this now is tagging uh, performance metrics uh, to the different academic tracks. So this is not currently done. Uh, we hope that could happen in the near future. Lastly, I want to congratulate the following uh, faculty members on the promotion for 2021 from assistant to associate professor, Dr. Amin Andalib, uh, general surgery, Dr. Maurice Anajar, urology, Dr. Dan Deckelbaum, general surgery, Jonathan Spicer, thoracic surgery, and Dr. Caroline Veselevsky, general surgery. And those promoted to full professor, Dr. Elizabeth Haglund, orthopedic surgery, Christian O'Clarity, urology and Sarah and Donian Urology. Congratulations to all of them. Next. And also congratulations to the following FRQS 2021 Salary Award recipients. For Junior One, Carmen Mueller and Stephanie Wong. And junior Two, Derek Rosenberg, Julio Fiore and Jonathan Spicer. And FRQS Senior, George Zocopoulos. Again, congratulations. And lastly, uh, some highlights. Uh, uh, Dr. Terry Krasik was appointed, appointed the Rock Robertson Chair in Trauma. Dr. Rafael Sanchez Salas appointed Jaroslavski Chair in Neurology. And Dr. George Zagopoulos uh, appointed as the Michael and Rana Rosenstein Career Award for Surgical Excellence. Congratulations. And that will be the end of my report. Thank you, Wes. Great, and we're going to go to uh, Dr. La Chapelle, who's uh, uh, the Adair Chair in Education. I hope. Oh, I think you're muted, uh, Kevin. A rookie mistake. I, I think there, uh, maybe the slides are out of sync, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll start with the PGME leadership team, and uh, these are really the individuals uh, that run the programs, but uh, more than running the programs, uh, they help the residents. And certainly by helping the residents, they certainly help us do our jobs. And uh, I think everyone would agree that we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the residents. And certainly we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without the program directors. So I think the core of what we do is related to this uh, and to these people that help us. So I would just like to uh, recognize everybody. So Emmanuel Moss from Cardiac Surgery you heard before and Sandra Lieberman who took over in general surgery is doing a fantastic job. Terry Benarash will have something a little bit more for Terry a little later on in orthopedic surgery. He stepped down in June and uh, Mitch has taken over from uh, Mitch Bernstein has taken over from Terry. So we're waiting good things from Mitch as well. And Mohammed is from uh, urology and uh, Stephanie who's taken over from plastic surgery, has done a great job in getting plastic surgery kind of fully accredited. Jason has been a stalwart for vascular surgery and Gabby and surgical foundation. So I really like to thank them all for the work that they do. I think it's, uh, it's essential. Next slide, please. In UGME, uh, we, we've also had a, a pretty solid team for a long time now and I, I think they really go unrecognized as well so there's been Simon and Sebastian have been there for almost 10 years now um, about eight and a half nine years and they've really created the curriculum that we have now and and really are the are the backbones of uh, of the UGME uh, surgical uh, curriculum and Maybe a lot of you don't know, but uh, McGill University is the university in Canada that sends the most medical students into surgery. And that's not just by percentage, it's also by pure numbers. So and I think a large portion of that has to do with the way in which the UGME is structured. Um, I'll also like to thank Elliot for the work that he uh, has done in the MUHC and is gonna be taken over now by Steve. Phil, all the work that he does at, uh, at St. Mary's. You have the next slide. And I'd like to just to shout out a, a special thank you to Terry. Um, I think being a program director in many ways is a very thankless job. Um, you get usually all the problems from the residents and then all the problems from the staff. 
uh, I think Terry has done a great job, took over the, uh, the program when it was um, uh, perhaps uh, met with significant challenges and was able to turn it around, developed a fantastic curriculum around it and helped a lot of other programs across the country. Next slide. And these are some of the, um, I, I'm not gonna read all of this, but some of the words that came out from, um, from the residents um, for Terry. And um, I, I'm glad to say that Terry was awarded the uh, Canadian Association of Medical Education Merit Award for 2022. Uh, that was just came out. I know it's for 2022, but I thought I'd, I'd put it in today. So again, thank you, Terry, for, uh, for all your hard work. Next slide. And I'd like to welcome Mitch on board. He's taking in big shoes, but uh, I'm sure he'll have all the support and help from the orthopedic division. So these are some of the numbers that we have in terms of residents. We have a, a total of 137 residents over the program, so with 41 fellows. So we have about 180 fellows and residents, and they're really the core of uh, what we do. And we've had a number of obviously graduating residents, and so. We are, we are producing residents that go on into training around the world and then come back to us, but also go to other areas. So it's been a, it's been a real good ride for us. I think we're a very strong uh, department with respect to training. Also in terms of research, I think we're starting to, along with uh, our group, with uh, Dr. Harley to, to become a little bit more academic and produce more papers we have about 22 I don't think they're in nature but uh, hopefully we will get a nature preparation in, I mean an, an education paper that would be quite something next slide please Thank you. so again I'd like just to recognize uh, Terry again for uh, his work for the department and also for uh, receiving the 2022 certificate of merit uh, I'd also like to uh, again underline um, Dr. Freed's contribution to the de department and specifically underline his role in education. And for that, he was um, awarded the Duncan Graham Award for Outstanding Contribution to Mental Education from the Royal College of Surgeons. For those of you who don't know, it's an award that's been around since 1969. It's, it's really a, a career merit award. And the other individuals at McGill that have received it uh, are uh, Fraser Gerd <clears throat> uh, and uh, Lloyd McLean, and also uh, our previous Dean Cruz. So uh, again, congratulations, Jerry, on an amazing career uh, and continuing to uh, contribute. Um, I'd like to also thank Danny uh, for um, becoming the Harvey Sigmund Undergraduate Teaching Award. Uh, Danny has done an excellent job in, in vascular surgery and, and, and also to be able to get that award <clears throat> from, a very, from a relatively small division means that uh, the contact that they have with students is, is quite excellent. Next slide. Um, I'd like to also kind of shout out with Sarkis, who was named to the uh, editorial board of Global Surgical Education. We have a number of other individuals that have had some uh, significant in, um, awards as well. Uh, Stephanie has won the David Owen Undergraduate Teaching Award in General Surgery. She also won previously when she was resident the Resident Teaching Award. Uh, Jenny had the undergraduate teacher award in general surgery and Teodora won the uh, Kent McKenzie award for educational excellence and in, in surgery and it was actually we had a, a, a difficult time um, in selecting there were three great candidates for that award next slide I'd also like to thank Sarkis and underline Sarkis's role in in fundraising I think um, Sarkis has been a great leader in the department of surgery and education and he went around to try to raise about $50,000, I think, and ended up raising $347,000 by painting his hair pink and shaving it off for breast cancer. So I'd like to put a shout out there for Sarkis. And there are other highlights, and, and I'm sure I've missed them, but a lot of them. So Ortho has kind of revamped their curriculum under Mitch and a bit more simulation, more evaluations. In cardiac, we have debates with the University of Toronto, which we always win, of course. And in plastics, they've uh, created a surgical lymphedema program, I think for the residents that would have been great. And also I just like to underline uh, Jerry Freed and Jason Harley, who are also a tandem as well at the simulation center. So it's a great access and resource for us 
Jerry being uh, the director and Jason being director of research. And the next slide, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm gonna go now to um, Dr. Barilet, um for research. Good morning. So um, I'd just like to tell you that we launched two graduate programs this year, the Digital Health Innovation Program, uh, which has now two students in it, and Giulio Fiore uh, launched the Surgical Outcomes Master's Program that has now eight students in there. So that's great. Next slide. I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Prisbal, who's joined the Division of Orthopedics. She's a... Um, uh, a soft tissue sarcoma researcher who's part of the cancer program at the RI. And um, if you have not met her and you're interested in her work, please reach out to her and uh, make her feel welcome. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, I'd like to mention the retirement of uh, Professor Blaschuk. He was a, a cell adhesion researcher with over 50 patents. He was uh, an associate director in the division of urology um, I was not aware that he founded um, one of McGill's few publicly traded companies around 25 years ago, and uh, good luck to him. Uh, this year, we have around 511 <clears throat> uh, publications overall to help you put that in perspective. That's around 5% of all of McGill's publications this year. It's around the same number as last year, give or take, you know, 10 or 15. And uh, I think that's, that's great. Total funding for the year for the department, $21 million, uh, hard to get into that in one slide, but approximately a third of that comes from government agencies, NIA, CIHR, et cetera, and two thirds other, other sources. We could play a guessing game if you like, what the question mark means, it was a symbol, but uh, what percentage of McGill's CIHR grants come from um, surgery, or what fraction rather? The answer was a seventh, a seventh of all the CIHR grants at McGill are from surgery. And the numbers in brackets are our success rates, McGill having a 22% success rate. We're slightly ahead, ahead of the average, which is uh, fantastic. Next slide, please. <clears throat> The graduate program, as you know, has come on uh, leaps and bounds. Uh, this year, these are the uh, numbers we've admitted, 15 PhD and 57 master students. If you look at the boxes below, on PhDs, we're, we're solid and have not changed. We've slipped a little bit in admissions for masters. This is partially deliberate as we're now concentrating on uh, PhD uh, applicants into the program. And uh, I guess COVID had a role to play there too. Next slide. Um, I'd like to congratulate the following students for having won FRQS awards to help uh, pay for their studies. Elise Delena, Gadir Alek, Puk Makina, Maxime Lapointe Gagnier, and Daniel, Daniela Vignette-Piera. Um, and uh, in particular, congratulations to Professor Fiore for his involvement with most of those students. Next slide. In October this year, we had a, an in-person strategic retreat planning meeting, not a strategic retreat. It was the planning meeting for the strategic retreat. We surveyed various internal and external groups, the Dean of um, Desertels, the business school, uh, AVPR and other, and other people really to kind of get a sense. We're working with the um, strategic consultancy firm, Juniper, and uh, please keep an eye out for the research retreat, which will be announced in quarter one of 2022. And really the aim here is to sort of give us some guiding principles and, and targets with which to measure our um, progress. Next slide. This year also, uh, Professor Mwale and I uh, spent many Saturdays uh, with our FRQS, uh, Shesha Bossier, um, and Clisson, whatever they're called, Clisson for um, CA uh, applicants. Um, we put together a training program uh, in the junior faculty initiative to really help people um, structure their application. Um, 
it was good i think it was good and the feedback we had was positive but we are augmenting this with um a writing program as well so a kind of basic training on on how to convince people to hand over money uh, in a in a document next slide please um, the clinical innovation platform opened this year uh, in September, middle of September um, with a kind of big bang. We had uh, $2 million from um, the uh, National Bank to advance uh, startups from, um, from McGill. And we've been re slowly recruiting uh, key opinion leader members. We have, um, I believe, seven startups have joined in the last uh, two months. Uh, we have a venture capital firm, Meraki, who are the Canadian arm of a Boston VC. That's a, that's a huge thing, having a, a company with such massive resources uh, on C9 at the MGH and available for anyone to speak to. And we have two uh, longer standing members who are here as COVID pilots, Medicom, the PPI manufacturer, and Alpap, Respiratory Technologies. So it's uh, gone from empty to uh, thriving. Sorry, do you need to go back? Next slide, please. Um, also at the clip, we've, uh, you may not know that uh, Dr. Feldman has established the um, Surgical Robotics Lab. This is run by Dr. Amir Hushia. And since June, he, um, he's been getting going. He basically had nothing, an empty room. Um, he, we actually now have robots in the Surgical Robotics Lab. And he's uh, excellent at um, attracting resources equipment. He's applied for five grants. He's got one already. We now have three students in surgery who are doing their theses on uh, surgical robotics projects with Dr. Feldman and Dr. Chicheri. And already we have uh, four papers on the topic and an ROI filed. So if you're not aware of Amir and the Surgical Robotics Lab and you're interested in that, please uh, either reach out directly or ask me and I will connect you. Uh, it just leaves me to wish you all uh, season's greetings, um, take it easy, and write lots of papers this, uh, this holidays. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. That's great. Um, and I uh, just want to add a, a couple of things as we wrap up. Um, and uh, first thing is that we have two of our faculty members uh, uh, being recognized for uh, 25 years on faculty at McGill. Um, and um, thanks to uh, Christina, we will receive this beautiful basket for their holiday enjoyment. And I will get it to them as soon as I can. So Dr. Uh, LaChapelle, who unfortunately had to go, uh, go to the OR, um, and, uh, and Dr. Uh, Tongay, uh, of course, both are, are very well known to, uh, to everybody here. Uh, Dr. LaChapelle for his, uh, his uh, very significant contributions in, uh, of course, clinically, but um, in, uh, in, in surgical education and establishing uh, the, uh, the Steinberg Simulation Center and directing it uh, twice, initiating our uh, surgical education concentration in experimental surgery and, and co-directing the surgical innovation concentration. Uh, he's been recognized with many, many teaching awards. He's on the faculty honor list. He received the Association of uh, Faculties of Medicine of Canada John Rudy Award uh, and uh, David Johnson Award from McGill uh, Alumni Association uh, for being exemplary ambassador for McGill, as well as special recognition for service to the faculty. And of course, he served as our ADAIR Chair and Associate Chair for Surgical Education for almost uh, 10 years. Um, and uh, he will be uh, completing his second term and stepping down uh, as uh, our associate chair in surgical education, uh, but will be stepping into a new role um, in, uh, as associate chair for faculty development. Um, so thank you, uh, Kevin, on uh, amazing uh, contributions uh, over, over your career so far. Uh, and of course, uh, Dr. Simon Tongue uh, is the Chief of Urology at the MUHC and a professor in El Ali and Azrieli Chair in Urologic Sciences at McGill. Clearly uh, uh, a, a leader at, at every level, um, you know, here at McGill, provincially, nationally, and internationally, 
including being chair of the Urologic Cancer Committee at the Direction Générale de Cancerologie, uh, committees, multiple committees at the Royal College and the Canadian Urologic Association, where he was chair of uh, continuous medical education and served as treasurer and is past president of the Société Internationale d'Urologie, uh, very active internationally, uh, multiple congresses uh, organizing, and uh, he's been recognized with uh, the Jewett Award from the Kidney Cancer Research Network. Uh, he's been uh, received honorary memberships in multiple international urologic associations. Uh, so a wonderful, both of these uh, people, of course, are, have been uh, exemplary ambassadors for the Department of Surgery and for Miguel, and I want to congratulate them on, on their service. I also want to thank uh, Wes Kasouf. Uh, as you saw, he's been extremely busy uh, in the past uh, year uh, and has done an amazing job as Associate Chair for Academic Affairs. And uh, you can see all the activities and all the contributions that he's made over the past uh, uh, year. Uh, uh, he's been in the position for four years and uh, we'll be, we'll be stepping it down. We do have this nice uh, plaque for Wes that I'm sure he will put on, if the uh, hospital allows him to, he will nail it to his wall. Otherwise I'll have to go in his den at home. But um, thank you, Wes has been, uh, has, has uh, really uh, uh, made huge contributions as, as, you, as, as he showed uh, just a part of what he's been working on. And I think to the uh, benefit uh, of, uh, of all of our members. Uh, so I really, really appreciate uh, all that you've done, Wes, in the past uh, two years that I've been in this role. Um, and as I mentioned, Dr. LaChapelle will uh, step down as the associate chair at the end of his uh, completing two terms. And we are uh, act in the middle of the search, almost very, very close to the last phases of the search for the new uh, 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 Adair Chair and an Associate Chair, which I hope we will have an announcement uh, going into the new into the new year. Uh, just to give you, there is a few uh, transitions uh, at the Executive Committee uh, level. So uh, our Executive uh, includes our um, our Division Chiefs um, and the Surgeons and Chiefs at the JGH and St. Mary's Hospital. And I also want to thank uh, Donna Tataran for many, many years as, uh, as Chief of St. Mary's. I know that uh, Donna will be transitioning as well. Uh, and there's a search for a new, which is now the uh, Surgeon in Chief of the, uh, of the CIUS, uh, West de Lille. And there is a, a search for that position uh, about to begin. Uh, the other members of the uh, executive are, we've heard from today uh, are Associate Chair of Research um, and Education and Clinical. And we uh, will um, we'll, we'll add a new position in faculty development that will be sort of uh, take over from the academic affairs uh, dossier. And that will be uh, Dr. Kevin LaChapelle. And we're adding a new position, which uh, is going to be an associate chair for faculty life. Um, and uh, that is a, a, new, a new position that really will focus on uh, uh, a joy at work, uh, workplace engagement, people feeling connected to the department and recognized. So areas of programming could include uh, uh, what's listed here. So improving joy at work, uh, well-being, whole person development, DEI and professionalism. Also be responsible for uh, communication, uh, internal and external. We've done a huge amount of work. We, uh, on the website, uh, creating a new uh, kind of annual report uh, of course, uh, so, so social media, newsletter, uh, the Square Knot newsletter, other resources. And this, I, I really do hope um, uh, to encourage um, any, any surgeon in the department at any rank uh, who has an interest in, in this uh, across, our, across a, our network uh, to apply for this. And we will put the, we'll start that uh, search in the, in the new year. So that's a new position I'm, I'm uh, excited about. So um, I want to um, thank Christina Rainberger uh, behind the scenes uh, has uh, you know done uh, an amazing 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 job of uh, being uh, directing the um, directing the department um, and her team um, who do everything behind the scenes to um, for all, uh, to support all the work that that you've seen so. Um, uh, all the people that email you, uh, Adele and Franca, Derek, Terry, so many, so many others, 
that we uh, that do uh, do keep it all going and uh, in a really uh, exemplary, professional, and excellent way. And I want to thank uh, obviously everybody in the department uh, for for doing everything you do. You can see that despite challenges that we all know exist, uh, we we we're we're able to really continue to um, contribute in uh, education. Uh, in research, in advancing clinical care. And, uh, and I know uh, everybody every day trying to do some good in the world and trying to, trying okay. to make things a little bit better, uh, a little bit at a time. So I hope uh, people get uh, a little bit of a break over the holidays. Um, and um, I, I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, year in review. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody again soon. So thank you very much for joining this morning and have a have a great day.